teach but I really love to sing. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> again welcome to the Israel of God of Atlanta and uh, we thank you again uh, so much for coming out and uh, honoring the Lord's Sabbath day Amen. and um, like I said earlier you could have been so many places but God put it on your heart to be here. We're going to get right into it, sisters and brothers. We're going to go ahead and have the reading of the law, the reading of the law. And my brother, I want you to go to Exodus, the 20th chapter. You'll read verses 1 through 17. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Okay, read it when you get it. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the, the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt, do, thou shalt not do any work, thy, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is, in with, that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth, long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Brother, you can say ass if it's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid. The yeah, Lord yes, got sir. your back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> he said, donkey. <laughs> Ecclesiastes, I, I know you're trying to be respectful. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12. <laughs> verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 12. Verses 13 and 14. I might have to find another scripture that has ass in it so I can <laughs> make him say it again and let him know that the Lord is fine with it based on the context that you use it in. Right. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Okay, read it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. 
Let's go to the last book of the Bible, the last chapter of the Bible, Revelations 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh alive. All right, sisters and brothers, and as we say all the time, the law is your foundation. Without it, you don't have a basis to operate on. So it's very important that we make sure that we understand that First of all, you have to keep God's law in order to even have a chance for his grace. You have to keep that and understand what that is. Find out what his laws are and keep them. Now, we're going to go ahead and um, I like to read two preliminary scriptures of my own. Um, just so in case we have someone who is here for the first time or in case any of you old timers need reminding. Let's go, if we will, to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. And my brother, we're gonna read two verses there. Verses nine and 10. Isaiah 28, verse nine and 10. Okay, read it. <clears throat> whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? So if you're here today, any of you, whether you're old, whether you're new, uh, it doesn't matter. You should be in church to get knowledge of God and understand his doctrine and his way of doing things. That's your only purpose for being here. Read, my brother. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to the knowledge of God, you have to approach the word of God as a child. Children are our most smartest people on the planet. You don't teach them how to speak English. They just hear you and then they get it. They just get it because their minds are open. It's just freely open and whatever they see, that's what they do. They learn, the, they learn life objectively as opposed to subjectively, subject to what somebody has already previously told them because ain't nobody told them nothing. Mm -hmm. That's how you have to deal with the word of God. Be open-minded. So you have to do it as a child. Then that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little. There. So we have subject matter upon subject matter, and the way we uncover things on these subject matters is here little, there little, line upon line, precept upon precept, because that's how church ought to be. It should be a, a learning institution, Amen. a learning institution. And when you see a guy standing here and you see a guy over here reading, don't think it, think of it as something strange. This is how they did it. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, because you can't start in Genesis and read Genesis chapter 1 through 49 and learn about the Holy Ghost. You got to go to Genesis. You got to go to Isaiah. You got to go to John. You got to go to a whole bunch of different places to get understanding on a subject matter. So that's why we do what we do. So don't think it's strange. It's normal, even though the world is not normal and it seems strange to most folks. Now let's go, we will, my brother, to the New Testament because we have some new, some people to say, hey, that's the Old Testament. Well, let's go to the New Testament and see how Jesus conducted business when it came to church business. Luke, the fourth chapter. We're going to read, start reading at verse 14, my brother. When you get there, go ahead and get it started. And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region around about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Uh huh. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, 
he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for so to read. So Jesus, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue, went to the church on, the Sabbath on day. this day, on the Sabbath day, and he stood up for to read like this brother is going to be reading today. This is what he's, so you're following Jesus. You know, we, you, know you, you see the shirts out there. What would Jesus do? He would, he would stand up and read the Bible on the Sabbath day. Go ahead and read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So where would he read? He would read out of the Bible, out of the book, out of the Old Testament. Because when you think about it, most people don't think about the fact that Jesus didn't read from the book of Matthew. There was no book of Matthew. Jesus didn't read from the book of John. There was no such thing. So he opened the book the Bible and read from the book of Isaiah. And what, what, what did he do? And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So at this particular moment, in this particular time, he was sent to do all of these things. And then he said to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What these people did not know who were listening to them is that they were getting ready to be a part of history and a part of prophecy Amen. at that very, very moment. And the reason I know that is because of what he did in verse 20. Read verse 20, please. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all of them were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And one would one would think, well, why did he close the book right there? Why did he close the book at that particular verse to preach the acceptable year of the Lord? Read verse 21. And he began to say unto them, this day is, is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. The reason he closed the book, sisters and brothers, is because if we, if we would have went to Isaiah 61, there were other things that were prophesied whereby it was not time. It wasn't time. Because the other things taught about the vengeance of the Lord. And he knew that he had not come to seek the vengeance and the retribution of him and the father at that time. So he had to close the book. There ain't time for that. I say that to say that right now, sisters and brothers, most, many of us may be blessed enough to be living in the Bible days when the rest of Isaiah 61 will be fulfilled. And that is the vengeance part. That's the vengeance part. So he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And he stopped right there. And I read this all the time because I want to give people the proper mindset to be in as we go through the scriptures, as we go here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. We'll be all over the place. It's like you're, you're going to feel like you're in school learning how to please God and really learning how to protect yourself, not only from Satan, but from him but from him. Now we're going to get off into the lesson here. And as you can see, the title of the lesson is Behold, we well, don't see it yet, but it is Behold, the handwriting on the wall. Behold, the handwriting on the wall. And handwriting on the wall, sisters and brothers, is a metaphor that you may have used a time or two um, in your lifetime, but it's used to describe something that is seen, that is seen, that gives evidence of impending danger or doom. And it causes us to pay attention to the precursors of troublesome things, of troublesome things. In each and every one of our lives, there are things that happen, and we look at it and say, wait, wait, wait hold up, something, something getting ready to go down. And we see it before it happens. Mm -hmm. That's the handwriting on the wall. Mm -hmm. That in some type of way, the Lord is letting you see 
the things that are happening as precursors prior to the actual thing happening. And that's what we have to do as people of God and as children of God, sisters and brothers. And that is, we have to look at the world and we have to look at the state of the world. We have to look at things that are going on and we have to see the handwriting on the wall because there is so much lawlessness and so much sin that is going on in the world. It's so much, and it's going on to, to the point where it, it kind of traps you to the point where things seem like normal. Like, like they don't really seem that bad. But see, sisters and brothers, what that is, is that those things are under the shadow and under the subtlety of Satan. He knows how to smooth rough edges out so you don't see things that are not of God. They just become normal. But we got to, we, one thing we have to do is that we have to meditate on the word of God and the law of God so that we'll be prepared for the vengeance of God. Matter of fact, let's go, if we will, my brother, to Psalms, the 19th chapter. Psalms chapter 19. I know Peter, in, in a lot of Peter's writing, Peter would say, you know, I'm, I know you've heard this before, but I'm over, I, I think it meet for me to bring it to you as many times as need be. So it'd be put in your mind and in your head that we, you should do these things and meditate on these things day and night often, often. What do we say, my mm -hmm. brother? We said uh, Psalms 19, and we are going to pick it up at verse 7. Psalms 19 and verse 7. 19 and 7. When you get there, my brother, go ahead and read it. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. He said the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, and the testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. Because once you get in a habit, sisters and brothers, of, of, of adopting the word of God and you make it habitual, then it gets easier. It gets easier. Our problem is that we have too many distractions and too many disturbances pulling us away from the things that we ought to be doing. See, I, the thing about it, sisters and brothers, I can't be hanging around folks all the time that ain't going to do me no good, ain't going to do my mind any good. I can't be around you because I can't let my mind drift off of things that I ain't supposed to be doing. When I came to the word of God, my friends fell off. And it wasn't that I told you, look, y'all are sinners and I'm done with you. It wasn't like that. I just couldn't go places that they went. On Friday night, I can't go down. I ain't going to mention the name. Because <laughs> I mentioned it in classes before. Y'all know what it is. I can't go down there no more. Amen. Hey, man, we going down. The no, I can't do it. Come on, man. What you? No, come on, nothing. I can't do it. Because I'm trying to go on a pathway that's going to be pleasing to God. And the thing about it, sisters and brothers, is that that pathway, you got to be consistent with it. You got to see what's going on. You got to know everything that's happening around you. Because we're going to, and, and the very last scripture that we read today is a scripture that's going to explain to you that the thing that we're doing, everybody, all y'all are doing every day, y'all are escaping. Y'all are trying to escape into eternal life. You're trying to escape from, from this, 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 this demonic hole that we're in. And I know it just, you know, you don't see devils walking around with pitchforks and all kinds of lewdness where you live and all that. But Satan is subtle, sisters and brothers. He works on your mind to push it in directions that calm you down. That says, peace, peace, when the book says there is no peace. Amen. So you got to watch how you walk, how you move, how you flow, who you flow with, who you talk to. You got to watch all that. But go ahead and finish reading, my brother. The statues. Turn his mic up or you might want to turn your voice up. I don't know which one. But... Uh, Verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. That's why it's important, especially for new folks. And we're getting ready, we getting ready to start this, uh, 
this discipleship class on the first Sabbath in October to where we're going to give you some hands on every first Sabbath. Anybody that want to come over there to, to the classroom over there so we can get down in it and break it down in, in any type of, type of way you want to, on the basic and simple things. So we are all about enlightening you. And enlight he, he said that the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Go ahead. More to, more to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold, sweeter also than, than honey and the honeycomb. Uh -huh. That's when you start getting into that word and you start reading it, loving it, and applying it, then it's, it, it, it kind of rings different to you. The most exciting thing for me, sisters and brothers, is to take a subject matter and start working on a class. Because I've been reading the word for a lot of times. I said, oh, yeah, put that one in. Oh, yeah, throw that one in. Throw that one in. You almost, and then you have to break it down because you, you, you would have thrown 40, 50 scriptures in. And I ain't trying to be like, you know, some people. <laughs> you know. Not even like Brother Bowie. Brother Bowie, look. Keep your classes at an hour and a half. That don't pertain to me, though. That don't pertain to him. <laughs> All right. Keep on reading, my brother. Moreover by them is thy servant warned. He said, moreover by his law is, the, is his servant warned. Read. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. He said, and in keeping of them, I wanted the point I wanted to get to is moreover by his law is his servant warned. And it's not a warning about Satan. It's a warning about him, sisters and brothers. Amen. Because the rest, the rest of the world is trying to tell you about the little lamb, about sweet Jesus. But he's letting you know that you're being warned and you're being warned from him or about him. Now, let's move on, my brother. Let's go, if we will, to uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Because, sisters and brothers, we are in a time here. We are, we are in a time that, um, you know, and, and, and the reason I even say that we, we, we are in a perilous time is because of uh, the subtlety. Because you got to learn to have eyes to see things. Have eyes to see things. And make sure that you put yourself at an advantage by making sure that you don't surround yourself by things, entity, people, whoever it is, that are going to be intimate to, towards your downfall. You can't do that. What do we say? Second Timothy, the third chapter? Yes, sir. Okay, start at verse 1, my brother. We're going to read <clears throat> verses 1 through 5. Go ahead. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own, of their own selves, Covetous boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient parents, unthankful, unholy. He said unthankful and unholy. These are, these are subtle little things that we, you know, it's, it's real difficult, sisters and brothers, to look at yourself. That's the most difficult thing in the world is to look at you. I can look at this sister or that brother and I can point out every little fault they got. I can point out your, your shirt wrinkle, your pants wrinkle. They got a hole on the left side. I can see you real good, right? Can't look at myself like that. That's one of the hardest things to do is to look at yourself. Look, look at yourself. In all of these things, he's saying that we need to kind of watch out for these things because perilous times are here. Read. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent. He said incont incontinent, incontinent, and that is lack of self-control, if you want to know what that meant. Go ahead and read. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. You see, sometimes you'll be doing the right thing or trying to, to do the right thing, and people go against you anyway. You find yourself being alone on your job or wherever it is. You're trying to do right, and somebody got to find fault in your rightness. You're trying to do for somebody. Why you give him all that? Why you, why you give him that much? Why you do that for him? He, he got to learn to do some things on his own. And you, all you're trying to do is do good, right? Amen. Go ahead and read, my brother. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Uh -huh. And this is the kicker right here. Read it. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. But, from such, turn away. He said, from such, turn away. And the bottom line, sisters and brothers, we ain't got that much time. 
none of us are promised the next day. We're not. That's why when you, when, when, you, when, when you do what you do, make sure you're doing something that is pleasing in the sight of God. Because you don't know when your time is coming. Matter of fact, go to Job, my brother. Go to Job 14. Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14. And we're going to read verses... One and two, and then we're going to skip over to five. Job 14, verses one and two. Okay, read it. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He said, man that is born of a woman, that's all of us. You are a few days and full of trouble. These little 60, 70, 80, 90 years, that ain't nothing as it pertains to eternity. He said, you are a few, you are a few days and full of trouble. It's trouble everywhere, sisters and brothers. You got a small amount of time to do what's right. You got one at bat. Look at it like that, one at bat. It ain't like you're going to bat in the first inning, second inning, third. You got one at bat. You got to hit that mark. But why? He said, man that is, few, uh, that is born of a woman is few of days and full of trouble, verse 2. He cometh forth like a flower uh -huh. and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. He cometh forth like a flower and he's cut down like a lawnmower cutting grass. And that grass is never to be alive again. Life is precious, sisters and brothers. And if all of us would just live our life and die and never be known again, then I would say, eat, drink, and be merry. Do whatever, do whatever you want to do. But every single one of us coming back. I had two brothers, younger brothers, that passed away one last November, one three or four years ago. I remember when they were born. I remember every single day of their life. And now they're cut down, gone before me. They're just gone. That's why it's very important to take inventory of your life and understand that you have precious seconds because we don't have a whole bunch of time to be messing around. Verse 5, seeing his days are determined. Seeing that his days are determined, read. The, numbers, the number of his months are with thee. The number of your months reside in the ledger of God. Read it. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. He has appointed you a boundary, sisters and brothers, and you will not pass that boundary. We don't know who won't be here next week or the week after or next year. But it's a boundary that you can't pass. And if you know, sisters and brothers, that it is a boundary that you cannot pass, you cannot mess with this precious life. You can't. You can't mess around with it. Now, why is it that we, another reason that we are in trouble or, or a few days and full of trouble, let's go, if we will, my brother, to Revelation the 12th chapter. Revelation the 12th chapter. Revelations chapter 12. Revelations chapter 12. And I want you to pick that up in verse, at verse 7. Revelations 12 and 7. Okay, go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Uh -huh. And prevailed not. Neither, were there, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So he talks about a war being in heaven, and he, he talks about the, the end of that war, that, they, that was, it was fought with Michael and his angels, the, uh, the dragon and his angels, and they did not prevail, and they were essentially kicked out of heaven. Go ahead and read. That's the third heaven. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth 
And his angels were cast out with him. So that, that, that devil, that deceiver was cast out into the earth where we reside, sisters and brothers. Skip down, if you will, uh, to verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants, inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. He said, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Go ahead. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So he's come unto you to deceive you, to trick you, to make you lazy, to take your mind to places that it don't need to go, and to think that everything is peaceable. I can pay my bills. You know, I got a nice car. I got a nice house. But are we doing the things, sisters and brothers, to escape this realm that we in? Are we pushing it to the maximum? Are you giving everything you got? Are you, are, are you exhausted because of what you're trying to do for the word of God? It's got to be like that because he did say that our righteousness, righteousness was like filthy rags. Anyway, that's, what, that's how your righteousness is. So you need to do everything you can do to make sure you get on the right side of this guy because Satan is coming down, having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. And that's where they got the term. He's miserable about that. And that's where the term came from. Misery loves company. Because he wants to bring as many of us with him as he possibly can. Now, let's go, if we will, to Hosea, the fourth chapter. And let's just see... How's everybody doing? How's the Lord thinking about the world and how everybody's doing? Hosea, the fourth chapter, my brother. When you get there, you're going to start at verse, uh, verse 1 and 2 and skip to 6. Hosea, the fourth chapter. Hosea, chapter 4. Hosea, the fourth chapter. Start out at verse 1, 1 and 2 and skip to 6. When you get there, read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. He said that Lord, the Lord has a controversy, he has a problem with the inhabitants of the land. That was back then. You know it's right now because there is no truth. There is no mercy, and for large part, there is no knowledge of God or the true God of the Bible in the land. It's just not, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. You can tell by, our, you know, we got a nice little crowd here, but it should be bubbling over. We should have folks over there in the annex, and folks should be, be, be wanting to get this word so much we had to set out tents with air conditioners outside. Mm -hmm. That's how it should be if you're thirsting for the word of God. But he has a controversy because he knows that that is not the case. That is not the case. Keep on reading, my brother. By swearing uh -huh. and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. And see, this, these things are commonplace. It's commonplace. Somebody, you know, uh, committing adultery or rapid fornication, these things are, these, these things are, are, are the norm, sisters and brothers. You don't even get no press for doing that stuff now. You know, if you're a, a star, a celebrity, you know, you bounce from this person, this celebrity, to that celebrity, to this one, to that one, and that's how the public is, too. You're just bouncing around like, that, like there are no consequences yeah. to things. But the Lord got a problem with that. That's why, you know, you, if you look at the whole, if you, if you look at the, you know, I, I come from the cell phone industry. You know, you got a big old circle, and everybody is in the circle. Everybody is taken care of. You know, you get your, you get your signal. But then when, when, when things start happening, folks start doing things within the network, then that signal gets smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of its effectiveness because it has to cater to different things, crazy things that are going on that wasn't going on when he set it up or when the network was set up. Now you got all these things. That's how it is with the word of God. And what, what happens is that you got everybody starts out like this. And then when, you, when, when the law of God hits everybody, the circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller because there are a few people that are left in that circle that are doing the true word of God. Mm. Everybody else is on the outside of the circle doing your thing, thinking God don't see you, but he see every single thing that you do. Mm. That's, what, that's what kills me. I could be by myself, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing nothing against this guy because mm. I understand that he see, that he does see everything. Now, where were we, my brother? Verse 6. Skip down to 6. Go ahead. 
My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt not, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. He said, I'm going to forget your children. What do you mean by I'm going to forget your children? They ain't going to have nothing. They're going to have heartache. You're going to have heartache and pain as a result of them. They're going to be lost in the streets because you ain't trying to teach them, chastise them about the word of God. He said, I'm going to forget your children. Hmm. I'm going to forget your children because as a people, sisters and brothers, we ain't dealing with our children like we ought to be dealing with them. We're just not. It's just simple as that. And the thing about it is that most of us, especially of our people, we, 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 we just don't see. We, 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 we just simply blind. Go to Isaiah 42, my brother. Isaiah the 42nd chapter. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. You're going to pick that up at verse 18. Isaiah 42 and 18. We'll do 18 through 25. When you get it, my brother, read it. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that, they, that ye may see. He said, hear ye deaf, and look you blind, that you might see. Go ahead. Who is blind but my servant? He said, who is blind but my servant? Go ahead. Or deaf as my messenger that I sent. He said, who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I have sent? Go ahead. Who is blind as he that is perfect? And blind as the Lord's servant, uh -huh. seeing many things, but thou observe not. And who is the Lord's servant? The Lord's servant, sisters and brothers, is Israel. It's us. Who is blind but us? Who is blind but us? Go ahead, my brother. Seeing many things, but thou observest not. He's seeing, seeing many things, and you ain't observing not. Nine times out of ten, it's because you don't want to see it. You looking at something, nah, that ain't, I ain't gonna believe my lying eyes. Your eyes telling you the truth, sisters and brothers, about what's going on. When you, when, when you cast a blind eye to it, then you put yourself at a disadvantage. But Israel in general is blinded. Go ahead. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. Uh huh. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law. And make it honorable. He said in verse 20, seeing many things, but observe is not opening the ears, but you don't hear nothing. It's because you don't want to hear nothing. Go ahead. But 22. this is a people robbed and spoiled. He said this is a people robbed and spoiled. Go ahead. And they, are, and they are all of them snared in holes and they are and they are hid in prison houses. He said they are hid in prison houses. You know, people, people, people go and they march and they do all this kind of stuff, wondering why, why is it that we are, we, we are the biggest uh, uh, proportion of people in the penal institution. We don't even sit and wonder why, because we don't like to read stuff like this. Hmm. It's a reason that we last hired and first fire. It's a reason that your children can get shot in the streets by the police and all they can have to say is, I fear for my life. But we don't want to look at the word of God to get the answer to the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. It's because we blind as a people. I mean, who, who is it that has the big platform is telling people this? Nobody. Because your leaders, your big time people in the, in, 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 in the gospel, they famished too. They blind too. And if they would turn back to the word of God or turn to the word of God, you'll see the problems start to dissipate. They would dissipate. But, you know, it hasn't happened. Go ahead and read. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth. For a spoil, and none, and none saith restore. And ain't nobody going to deliver you out of this. Nobody is standing up trying to restore you out of it. Because they don't even see you trying to, tr trying to look towards solving things yourself. Go ahead and read. Who among you will give ear to this? Uh-huh. Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for spoil and Israel 
to the robbers. Did not the Lord, did not the Lord, he against whom we have and see, that's what, that's what Israel don't realize is that, you, you know, we go, we march and we go against the, you know, the Gentile and we go against all these powers. Of but you don't understand that they're just the bat in the Lord's hand. He said, who gave you to the spoilers? Who gave you to the robbers? Go ahead. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? Uh-huh. For they would not walk in the ways, neither were they obedient unto his law? That's the reason we're in the shape that we're in. But we don't look at the handwriting on the wall, sisters and brothers. Mm. We don't look. We don't think. We just look and, you know, we just go day by day. Not even looking at the answer to the question which is right in front of your face. Go ahead and read, my brother. Finish it. Therefore he hath poured unto him the fury of his anger uh -huh. and the strength of battle. And it had set him on fire round about, yet he knew not. And it, uh, and it burned him, yet he laid it not unto heart. He laid it not to heart. Now, all this stuff that's going on with our people, he, nobody, is a, nobody is wanting to answer to the question, why? Hmm. Well, it's just like that. But why? And the answer to the question is in the word. If you brought it to him and put it right in their faces, sisters and brothers, hey amen, this is the reason why. You turn from the Lord. He robbed you. He is, it ain't the white man. It's the Lord. They just the bat in his hands. Amen. If you turn from him, if you turn to him, then he'll bless you. If you turn from him, guess what you're going to get? Therefore he, who is he? The Lord. Had poured upon him the fury of his anger. Whose anger? The Lord's anger. And the strength of battle. And it has set him fire round about. Set who fire round about? All of y'all. And your children and your folks that ain't got nothing and your folks that don't want nothing and your folks that's mind, your, their mind have been made in, in such derision from Satan. They don't know whether they're coming or going. And he said, yet he knew not. Who is he? Israel knew not. And it burned him. He didn't even know where the fire was coming from. And it was coming from your God. That's where it's coming from. It's because of you, you, you have dove into lawlessness and deepen yourself into the doldrums of sin. Let's go, if we will, remember, let's keep that rolling on that same vein. Let's go to Romans, the first chapter. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, we're going to pick that up, my brother, at verse 18. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. Read it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Uh, that, 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 that's, what, that's the answer right there. He said, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all godliness and unrighteousness of men. Go ahead. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. We could have went to, to Isaiah, I think it's 28 or 29 chapter where he says, Israel is just saying to, saying to, every, saying to the Lord, speak to us smooth. Mm -hmm. Tell us lies. Just, you know, don't tell me. Don't tell me what I need. I need for you to lie to me because if you lie to me, it makes me feel good. I want you to just lie real good to me. Because I, I, I want to be told what I want to hear, what my, what, what, my, what my soul feels like it wants to hear. I want to feed my sinful soul. That's what we're saying as a people, sisters and brothers. Verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Uh-huh. For God has showed it unto them. So, so God has shown it to some people. And let me tell you something. When you look at some of these big personalities, some of these big preachers that are on television, they know, sisters and brothers, they are just unwilling to stop the gravy train. Why should I stop that? Then they fool themselves and say, God is blessing me. Look what I got. It must be from God. No, I can take you to Luke, the fourth chapter, and read up a little earlier than we did in the beginning and show you that it ain't God. And if somebody else then offered you up something that you accepted. And that's none other than the Satan devil. He said, the whole world is mine to give. All you got to do is bow down to me. If you bow down to me, it's yours to have. And see, they are what? Deceived. They are not looking at what? The handwriting on the wall. Go ahead and read, my brother. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. Uh -huh. For the invisible things of him from the creation 
of the world for the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. They are not excuses, and brothers. It is inherent in all of us to do what is right. You might not do every single thing and dot every uh, I and cross every T, but it is inherent, inherent in your makeup to do that which is right for the most part. But then we give in to the other part of us that is sinful in nature. And we do that that is opposite of the word of God because we're trying to satisfy that flesh because the flesh loves sin. I'll be a, I, I, and I'll be a witness to you. Sin, it feels good. <laughs> I'm telling you from firsthand uh, experience. <laughs> sin, it feels good. That's why you have to bring your mind, soul, and body that Paul talks about under subjection. When the mind and body want to do something that it ought not do, you got to say, you ain't doing that. And that's really what spiritual warfare is right there. Amen. Spiritual warfare is wanting me to jump down there and box with Anthony until he just fall out. I love my brother. That's why I leave, use him as, as an example. But the word of God, much as I want to box with him, tells me that I cannot do that. But my spirit and my body wants to real bad. <laughs> but I have to overcome that and bring my body, mind, and soul under subjection and let that bad feeling be in me. But I'm righteous. I'm righteous because I overcame the feeling of sin and I defeated it that time. But just like he told Jesus in the fourth chapter of Luke, oh, he went and left Jesus. Jesus rejected him, beat him up, he said. And Satan left him for a season. He always coming back. He coming. Don't, don't think back. Don't go out and celebrate and pop his champagne and all that. Think you got a victory, you know, just because you overcame some sinful thing that you was going to do and you ain't do it. Oh, he coming back. He's coming back. What verse are you, my brother? 21. Read it. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Uh-huh, read. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They became fools in their own earthly wisdom. Go ahead. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image like unto a corruptible man, into birds, into four-footed beasts, into creeping things. Uh-huh. Wherefore, God also gave them up to un uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So God gave them up to the thing that they wanted to do. You want to do that? You hell bent on doing that. Look, I didn't try to warn you. I didn't put the writing on the wall. I have done this. I've done that. I'm going to let you go on on your little escapade there. Mm. I'm going to seal you. I'm going to seal you unto unholiness. You just go on down that road. If you so hell bent on doing things that are anti-Christ and anti-God and not not, not in line with the word of God, I'm going to let you do it. Go ahead and read. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped the, and served the, the, creature, the creator, creature more than the creator, excuse me, who is blessed forever. Amen. And that's where we find ourselves, sisters and brothers, on some of these big scales to where you see people worshiping people instead of God. We don't play that here. I'm here this week. It'll be somebody else next week. And Brother Bowie sends people out, and we listen to him on one of the Sabbaths, but he, he can't be everywhere at the same time. So he sends folks out to deal with the Word of God. Go ahead and read. Where, where are you? That was the last scripture. We can read. That was the last scripture. That's the last one? Okay. Now, let's move real quick, sisters and brothers. Let's go. And I told you, you have to make sure and understand that you're responsible for your own actions. You're responsible for your own actions. When you read the word, you must take heed to what it is saying because it is, it is true. It is like a boomerang. It's going to come back to you. It's going to come back to you. Let's go, if we will, my brother, to um, Galatians, the sixth chapter. Galatians chapter six. Galatians chapter six. Galatians six. Galatians six. 
Galatians, the sixth chapter, and we're going to read a couple of verses here. Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Okay, read it. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. He said, be not deceived, for God is not deceived. Go ahead. For whosoever a man, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I want you to sit and think about that for just a moment, sisters and brothers. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Whatsoever means everything. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You need to think about that in everything that you do, in everything that you say, in everybody that you say it to. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall also reap corruption. If you sow it to your flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Go ahead. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So the thing is, sisters and brothers, it works both ways. So if you, if you sow wickedness, you shall surely reap wickedness. If you sow righteousness, you will reap that. But let me give you, let me tell you a big old secret. It's going to happen in this lifetime. He ain't waiting until judgment. He's not waiting, sisters and brothers. It's going to be in this lifetime that you're going to reap what you sow. Watch what you say to people. Watch how you treat people. Watch what you do in this particular realm that you're living in. Because it's coming back. That's why, I said, you know, if, if, if I think I said something wrong to somebody, I get scared. Because I know I reap what I sow in this lifetime if we will, to Psalms, the ninth chapter. Because the thing about it, sisters and brothers, you, like, like he said, you reap what you sow. The things that you put out there, come on, man, get an understanding that it's coming back. You're responsible. You know, I tell people all the time that you are born looking like your mother and father or your auntie or somebody like that. But you die looking like the decisions you made in your life. That's how you look when you die. Like the decisions you made in your life. All that blame, but you know, when I grew up, this and that, no, the Lord, he, he going, everybody going to have their day where they have a, a, a period of time where the Lord will open the door and bless you or show you some light or, or allow you to be able to see. He's not going to just close you up and for all your life, nobody showed you nothing. You didn't see anything. You know, it, nothing was ever brought, uh, nothing was ever brought your way. Psalms 9 and my brother, I want you to pick it up at verse 15. Psalms 9 and 15. Psalms 9 and verse 15. All right, read it. The heathen are sunk down in the, in the pit that they made. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. Go ahead. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. It was their own, the net, he, what, did he, what did he say? He said, and the net which they hid is their own for somebody taken. else mm -hmm. is their own foot entangled in it. You think you getting away. You ain't getting away. There used to be a song that when I was going up, it said, the, di the ditch you dig, you better dig too, because the ditch you dig, it might be for you. Mm -hmm. It might be for you. So when you're trying to tangle somebody else up, jack somebody else up deceitfully, then watch out. I'm just trying to get y'all a hand right on the wall. That, that's all I'm trying to do. Go ahead and read, brother. The Lord is known by the judgment which he ex executed. He is known by the judgment which he executed. Again, you sow the wind, you reap the whirlwind because he is what? The original OG. Go ahead and read. The wicked is snared in the work of his, of his own hands. He said that the wicked is snared in the work of of his own hand. I see you didn't want to read that little that, that next one, did you? He, yeah. I, 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 you didn't have to. You didn't have to. I peeped it, though. You, you didn't have try. to. I, I felt you there, brother. Uh, let's go, if we will, to Daniel, the fifth chapter. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. I want you to pay close attention to this, sisters and brothers, because this is, the, this is the, the tipping point of this lesson right here. Daniel, the fifth chapter, Daniel chapter five, and start at verse one, Daniel five and one. All right, my brother, go ahead. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast 
to thousands of his lords and drank wine before the, before the thousands. So Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. These are the closest people to him and probably their wives, I would imagine, and drank wine before thousands, before thousands. It would be the equivalent, sisters and brothers, of Barack and Michelle Obama having a White House party. And they're inviting Elton John. They're inviting, I think Princess Diana was dead then, but um, they're inviting all of these famous people. And it doesn't matter what these, you know, what these people have done in their lives, as long as they're famous, they're well known, and they have money. So he said that they drink, they drink wine before thousands of people in this big extravaganza that Belshazzar was having. And what did he do in verse 2? Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded, commanded to bring the golden, golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem. That the so, king. So this is the thing. So he commanded to bring the, the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple of God's temple that was in Jerusalem. Read. That the king and his princes and wives and his concubines might drink therein. That the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink out of the vessels which were taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, the golden vessels. Go ahead and read. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was in Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. Big mistake, hmm. big mistake. Keep reading, my brother. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. So they was praising other gods, sister brother. Keep in mind that this is Belshazzar. This is the son of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the man that the Lord set over the Babylonian Empire that ruled the entire known world. He gave him his power, seat, and authority. And when he thought that he got so big, the Lord humbled him and made him go out into the wilderness as a beast for seven years. So he humbled him. But the thing about it, sisters and brothers, is Belshazzar was a witness to this. But now you see that he's serving the gods of gold and of silver and had all his people and his big shindig drink out of it. And the Lord took notice of that. Verse 5, read it. In the same hour came, fo came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the, upon the plaster of the wall, for the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. So the king saw the hand or the fingers that wrote on the wall. And there was a message on the wall. But keep reading. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled. See, the, the, troubled see, 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 if somebody didn't know about the God of Israel, it'd be like, okay, there's some writing on the wall. You know, which one of y'all magicians made that happen? You know, but, you know, he, he, he it said that his countenance was changed. That's his visage. His appearance in his face was changed. Then and he, then his thoughts troubled him. Go ahead and read. So that so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. So his knees, was, imagine somebody sitting, you, you, you know, you can't, his knees were probably not smoting when he was standing. He probably sitting down and everybody could see the knees going like that. <laughs> when them knees get to knocking like that, sister and brother, you know trouble on the way. You scared about something. It's something that's, word, that's, that's on your mind. You know, you might, it might be that you know, you, you've been in your house for six or seven years and that, that $8,000 balloon payment due and you ain't got it. Them knees start knocking. <laughs> the knees start knocking. Something is impending and that frightened him. Go ahead and read. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, 
Whosoever shall read this writing and show me un and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler of the kingdom. He said, anybody can tell me what this writing on this wall means. You, I'm going to set you up. You're going to have it. You, all, you're gonna have all this stuff. Keep reading, my brother. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known, make known to the king the interpretation thereof. So they couldn't read. They said they couldn't read the writing nor make the interpretation thereof. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were, were, astonished, were, excuse me, were stayed, stunned. Go ahead. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king, and his lords came into the, to the banquet, banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. He said, look, the queen came over. Look, don't, don't let your countenance, don't be afraid. There's somebody that we could, you know, maybe bring in here, and they'll be able to let you know what's going on with the, with, with the writing on the wall. Go ahead and read. There is a man in the kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, and thy father, light and understand and wisdom. Like the wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the, of the magicians, astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. So there is a guy that I know of that back in your father's day, he was made, he was over all of the soothsayers, the magicians, and all. he was over them. This guy will be able to tell you what it is that you saw in the handwriting on the wall. Go ahead and read. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. Go ahead and read. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou, Daniel, which are the children of the, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of, out of Jury? And Belteshazzar said, he said, Are you that Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of Jury? Read. I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that, and that light of understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. He said, look, I've heard of you, man. I heard that, that there's wisdom in you. There is light in you. There is understanding in you. Read. And now the wise men and astrologers have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show me the interpretation of the thing. Go ahead. And I have heard of thee, that thou, that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler of the kingdom. This king was so scared, he was willing to give up a whole lot of power just to get the interpretation of the dream. Go ahead and read. Then Daniel answered and said, Before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. He said, I don't want your gifts. You don't have to give me that. I'm, I'm going to make known the writing and the interpretation of the writing. Go ahead. O thou king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, a kingdom and a majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all the people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would he slew, whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. So in other words, sisters and brothers, he said, your father Nebuchadnezzar, he was given power over the entire world. Whom he wanted to kill, he killed. Whom he wanted to keep alive, he did. If he wanted to set you up, he set you up. If he wanted to bring you down, he brought you down. And the power was given to, that, given to him by none other than the God of Israel. But what happened? Read it. 
But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne. And they took his glory from him. He said, but when his heart was lifted up, when he had all kinds of pride, his mind was hardened and he was he was deposed from his throne. What did he literally do to him? Verse 21. Read it. And he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like a like the beast and was it was dwelling and his dwelling was with the wild asses. <laughs> You found your scripture. <laughs> I told you, I, I got you. I got you, my brother. We was going to run into it. I had a script for you already in the lesson. <laughs> they fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointeth over it whosoever he will. So he said that, he said that, he drove Nebuchadnezzar and made him like a wild beast until he knew he took him. Sometimes the Lord will take you down till you submit. All right, Lord, this is you. What you want me to do? Now, he don't, he don't do everybody like that. Remember, he, he let up, some people just, you just go on over there. You want to be wicked? Let me go on and fix your mind right there so you can stay on that wicked path. But he thought enough of Nebuchadnezzar to humble him and then make Nebuchadnezzar know that, the, that he was God and that he ruled in the kingdom of men and you got what you got because I gave it to you. Hmm. Amen. I gave it to you. Go ahead and read. Look, look at verse 22. Read that. And thou his son, O Belshazzar. He said, and thou his son, O Belteshazzar. Go ahead. Has not humbled thine heart. You have not humbled your heart. You saw what happened to your daddy. You knew that I was God and I rule in the kingdom of men and whosoever I want to give it to, whoever I want to bring up, I bring up. You should have learned from the handwriting on the wall, yes, which is what your daddy went through. Why you got to go through the same thing your daddy went through? But you didn't humble yourself. He said, thou hast not humbled thine heart. Go ahead. Though thou knewest all this. You knew all this. Mm. You saw it. You saw how your daddy was put into the wilderness, wilderness with a mind of a beast. Can you imagine a man that's at high stature and the Lord messed with his mind so much that he running around with lions and gorillas and stuff and just, you know, just cohabitating with them. <laughs> Looking like a man. But he took, but you didn't humble yourself and you knew all this. And what else have you done, Belteshazzar? But have lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. Uh-huh. And they, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and brass and of brass and iron, wood and stone, which see not nor hear nor know. And the, and the God in whose hand thy breath is and whose are all, excuse me, and whose are all thy ways. Has thou not you glorified. have not glorified the God of the creation, the God that puts the breath in your lungs and lets you breathe in and breathe out and consume it without doubt that he's going to do it over and over and over again. You have not glorified this God. You have not glorified. Him. Go ahead and read. Finish it. Then was the part of the hand sent from him. And this writing and this writing was written. And he, he said, and then the part of the hand that was sent from him, and this is the writing. Go ahead. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, to kill you farsi. He said, mene, mene, to kill you farsi. Now, sisters and brothers, it was not that the wise men didn't know what many, many meant. Because many, many means numbered numbered. And to kill means weighed. And euphorcin means divided. So it's numbered, numbered, weighed, divided. The interpretation of many, many to kill the farcin means that numbered, numbered, weighed, divided. But if I said, said to any of y'all numbered, numbered, weighed, divided, if you hadn't read this story in the book, then you wouldn't know what in the world that means. You wouldn't want, if I said, behold, behold, sacrifice, party. 
Behold, behold, sacrifice party. You know what behold means? You know what sacrifice means? You know what party means? But you don't know what the message means. Mm. Amen. You don't know what the message means. So he had to bring the servant of God to let him know what numbered, numbered, way divided meant. What did it mean? Read, brother. And this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, to kill you farson. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished he it. He said, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Read. To kill. Thou art weighed in the balance and are found wanting. He said, thou art weighed in the balance and are found wanting. Wanting means lacking. You have been found lacking. Go ahead. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. He said, thy kingdom is divided and, and given to the Medes and the Persians. Who would have, who would have guessed that from the word, from the word euphorism, meaning divided, it means that it was given to the Medes and the Persians. Mm. None other than the servant of God. Mm. See, when you serve God, sisters and brothers, in spirit and in truth, and you pour yourself into it, he'll give you understanding. That goes beyond the understanding of even the most shrewdest person that you might think that's out there that has a national platform. Most of y'all in here are smarter than most of those guys. You just have to be, do things with consistency and don't let Satan make you lazy and make you not thirst for righteousness and thirst for knowledge and thirst for doing the service of God. It's all about trying to do something to get extra credit, man, because if your rags are filthy, then all of us need some extra credit. What can I do, Lord, to make up the, the mess I just made? What can I do? But this, sisters and brothers, Belteshazzar did not see the writing on the wall of his father. He saw what his father did. You should have been doing the opposite. Because when he saw the writing for, on his own wall, it was too late. Hmm. See, it's a time period where it's going to be too late. While you got the presence of mind right now hmm. to do what you need to do, then you need to take heed to what you need to take heed to. Now, let's go real quick, if we will. Let's go uh, uh, flip over a couple of chapters to Daniel, the seventh chapter. Because we talk about personal things and trying to make sure that you're staying up on uh, uh, looking at the handwriting on the wall and seeing the things that are going on around you. And then you learn from them and then you immerse yourself into the word of God so that you won't do the things that other people are doing and make the mistakes that other people are making. But then there comes a period of uh, 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 another handwriting on the wall that we ought to look at, sisters and brothers, and that is the handwriting on the wall that has been created by some of these four beasts that rule the entire known world. And we know that those four beasts was the Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Holy Roman Empire. And we're going to jump into this fourth one real quick right here. Um, Daniel, the seventh chapter. And let's pick that up, my brother, at verse 19. Verse 19. Okay, read it. Then I would know the, the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, would devour, break in pieces, and stamp the residue with his feet. And the thing is, sister, I didn't want to go over all four of the beasts because that wasn't the point. I want to get right to the fourth one and, um, and, 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 and show some things about him. But he said, I would know the truth of the fourth beast, that he was diverse from the other ones, and he would stamp the residue under his feet. Now, those four beasts, God gave them power, gave them, gave them the might to whoever they wanted to live would live, whoever they wanted to die would die, whoever they wanted to lift up would be lifted up. And this is that fourth beast. Read. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellow. And these are the intermingling sister brothers of the beast and the ten, the ten horns 
uh, uh, and the ten heads, and these things have gone up and down throughout history. We're talking none other than the Holy Roman Empire, and it has gone up and down and back and forth, but it will be intact at the time appointed. And we talked about that horn. That horn is none other than the one that will come from his seat in Rome, sisters and brothers, and he is the one that, uh, um, that we wanted to deal with just for just a moment here. But keep reading. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Uh-huh, go ahead. Until the Ancient of Days came, and the judgment was given unto the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So he tells you what's going to happen. He tells you that, the, that, that, um, that uh, he's I, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came. That's Jesus, and they took the kingdom. So he got right to the point right there. But what did, well, how was this fourth beast diverse from the others? Verse 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be, shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. And the ten horns of, the, of, the, of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall rise, and, an, and, another shall, and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall sub subdue three kings. So with this fourth beast, we know that he was given power to militarily take down other, other people, nations, and lands. But he did something a little bit more diverse. Verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think, and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and a times and a dividing of times. Well, this particular, this particular kingdom, sister and brother, or this particular beast, he is going to be given the power to change times and laws. See, the other ones, they just wanted to beat you up militarily. But this one wanted to change times and laws as it related to the word of God. See, now you're going into another realm. And when we say times and laws, even the time that we're on right now, the calendar that we're on, that's not God's calendar. But most of us go by it because we have jobs and we have things that we have to attain to. That's how that beast is alive. Also, this fourth, this fourth beast right here changed religious practices. And when we talk about religious practices, we're talking about things such as the Sabbath day being the, 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 the Christian Sabbath is supposed to be tomorrow, Sunday. But God's Sabbath is today. And then we had all of these councils of Nicaea of the so-called church come about and change the laws of God. In 325 A.D., Emperor Constantine came and they met at the, at the Council, of, Council of Nicaea. It is located geographically somewhere around the area of Turkey. This is where they had most of these councils of Nicaea, the councils of Constantinople, where they came in to change the doctrine that God had put in place. In other words, the Sabbath changed to Sunday. The Holy Ghost, the Trinity was derived, sisters and brothers, out of a group of bishops meeting up together and essentially voting on the nature of God. Mm. Voting on the nature of God. God the, what I was coming up is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost all rolled up in one. That is not of God. That is of the councils of Nicaea, the Pope, and all his gang. The Pope and all of his gang sisters and brothers. And that stuff has had staying power. You can't tell nobody that there's not a trinity. Mm -hmm. That's in the Sunday church. I'm sorry, I'm just laying it out there. You can't tell them. Where it, even though you can't see the word in the Bible, you can't see the word trinity. The trinity is this or the trinity is that. You can't see it. Even in the, in the New Testament, we're all over in the book of Acts. Jesus has gone off the scene. Paul is doing things. And he said he, the Thessalonians, they were more, uh, um, I think it was the Bereans, they were more adept than all, than all other people that they met with. And they came to see them three Sabbath days in a row. Sabbath days after Jesus was off the scene. But you still hell been on the first day. But the world is falling for it. But see, the Lord is going to make sure that all that stuff gets revealed, sisters and brothers. He's going to come and he's going to knock it down. Amen. Let me show you what I'm telling you about. Let's go to Ezekiel 13. Ezekiel the 13th chapter. 
Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. We coming on down the mountain, sisters and brothers. Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. Ezekiel 13. <clears throat> and my brother, let's do 1 through 3, and then we're going to do 14 and 15. Ezekiel 13. Okay, read it. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have, and have seen nothing. He said, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. You know, when somebody says, you know, the Lord spoke to my spirit and he told me to tell you why he got to go to you and not write to me about me. He said, and they have spoken and they and, and, and have seen nothing. Go ahead. Read, read verse four. Go ahead. Oh, Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Uh huh. And what have they not done? Go ahead. Ye have not gone up into the gates, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day. Of so the in Lord. the battle, in the, in, the, in the battle, in the day of the Lord, you have not uh, given, given our people what they needed to stand in that day. What is it that you, you need the word of God to be able to stand up in that day? Because when the Lord starts, to, when things start to unfold in, and things started to happen in all over the world, then we already know all this. Most of that stuff we know. We know the Lord's coming. You know, I remember when 9-11 happened. Everybody, oh, it's the end of the world. No, it ain't. <laughs> all planes stopped in the whole country. Even when COVID came. Oh, this is it. This is the, no, it ain't. <laughs> There's certain things that has to happen. The temple ain't gone up yet. The, day, the, 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 the Pope hadn't went over there and set up and, and, and stopped the daily sacrifice yet. It ain't happened. So we say, yeah, that, yeah, that was supposed to, those things will happen. These things will happen. That will happen. Perilous times going to be here, but it, the end is not yet. What verse? Uh, skip on down, if you will, my brother, to um, 14. No, as a matter of fact, uh, just make it 11. Skip down to 11. Make it 10. Go ahead. Because even because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace and there was no peace and one built up a wall and lo, others, others doubted, others doubted it with untempered mortar, untempered mortar, mortar that cannot stand. He said it because even they seduced my people saying peace, peace. with Oh, and nothing's wrong. Yeah, Jesus is this and Jesus is that. But see, the, uh, the thing that they built up, sisters and brothers, was the traditions. Things like the Sabbath, Sabbath days, things like Christ, Jesus was born on December 25th. Things that were not true, you know, three in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God. The, you have seduced my people with untempered mortar, mortar that is not strong, mortar that cannot stand. Now skip to verse 14. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar uh -huh. and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered. And it shall fall and ye shall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Uh -huh. So the Lord is going to break it down. Every every one of those traditions that have stood up, the Lord is going to break it down. And he's going to everybody's going to know that that was not the case. That was wrong. Go ahead and read. Thus, I will accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you. The wall is, is no more, neither they that dog. Neither they that dog. So all of these traditions that mankind is following now, the Lord is going to tear it down. And the thing about it is that, sisters and brothers, it would behoove all mankind to make sure that they get themselves on the side of God. Because this sweet thing that, I, that, that, that was going on when I was growing up, you know, we used to sing a song, He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I have found a Savior. 
and he's sweet. Nobody never saw it. I know he a gangster too. I ain't heard that song yet. <laughs> he's sweet, I know, but if you mess with him, he will, he, he, will, he will put that gangster up on you. Didn't hear that. But the thing is, is that the Lord is saying that all over the Bible. Let's go, if we will, my brother, to Psalms 2. Psalms, the second chapter. Psalms chapter 2. Psalms chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 10 through 12. Psalms 2, verse 10 through 12. Go ahead and read it. Be wise, be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Uh -huh. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. He says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Serve the Lord with fear. That's a hard thing to do, sisters and brothers, when you don't think there's, there's not much to fear about. Hard thing to do. But if you open your eyes to see, then you, you would, because you will understand that that whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. You'll watch everything you say, especially everything you do. Go ahead and read. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. He said, kiss the son. You better, you, you better, you, you better make, have a good relationship with the son. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Go ahead. And ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little. When his wrath is kindled but a little, go ahead. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Blessed are all they that put their, their trust in him. Let's go, we will, to Matthew 24. As a matter of fact, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna skip that one, DJ. Let's go to Revelation 6. Revelation 6. Revelation 6. Because this is the thing, sisters and brothers. When people, it's going to come a time when folks are going to realize, oh, this, 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 this thing was real. This God thing was real. Jesus was real because he did say that every knee going to bow, every tongue shall confess, right? Amen. They're going to bow to the name of Jesus. Revelation 6, and let's pick that up, my brother, at verse 1, and then we're going to skip to verse 12. Revelation 6, verse 1, and we'll skip to 12. Go ahead and read it. Okay, go ahead. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Come and see. We're going to go down to the sixth one. Let's go to verse 12. Go ahead. And I behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Uh-huh. Now, this is a lot of drama that's going on right here, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. Uh-huh. And when she had shaken off when she has shaken of a mighty wind when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places now this is a lot of stuff that's going on a lot of drama that the lord is going to bring upon this earth go ahead and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. So now they know that the deal is real. Mm. So everybody say, you know, there is no God. Mm. It's just a figment of your imagination. Mm. Never was God, it's just a story that was made up by this particular family. You know, that's a, you know, that's a story out there. His family made the story up. Now you're going to start hiding yourself. You, you're going to know at that point, oh, it was real. What are they going to do? What, what are these men going to do? Men, and, women, whoever they are, read it. And said unto the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. They will, they, these folks are going to be so petrified, sisters and brothers, they're going to want the rocks to fall on them so that they can have instant death. Mm. Instant death. But you might get it instant. And remember, you're dealing with a gangster. Mm. <laughs> You're dealing with a gangster, so he might, you know, inflict some long, long pain on you hmm. before he go on and take you out. You know how they do it in the gangster world. Hey, you know, I ain't going to talk about it too much. He said, for the great wrath, the great day of his wrath is coming, and who shall be able to stand? Nobody. Let's go, if we will, my brother, to uh, Revelation, I'm sorry, Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. After this, I have three more to go. And those people who are getting baptized, you can go ahead and excuse yourself now. Isaiah 24. 
Isaiah 24, and pick it up, if you will, my brother, at um, verse 5. We'll read 5 and 6. <clears throat> Isaiah 24, verses 5 and 6. Okay, go ahead. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, mm -hmm. changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. This is what the earth has done, by and large. See, most people of the, it, 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 on the earth, sisters and brothers, do yeah. not take heed to the word of God. They are not serving the God of the Bible, or the God of the creation. He said that the earth is defiled under the heavens there because they have changed, transgressed the laws and changed my ordinance and broken my covenant. Read verse six. Verse six. Excuse me. Therefore have the, therefore have the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned. And few men left. He said they are burned and few men left. Let's go, if we will, my brother, to Revelations 18. Revelations, the 18th chapter. Revelations 18. And when you get there, start, if you will, at verse 1. Revelations 18 and 1. Okay, read it. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was, light, was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the inhabitation of devils, and, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the hold of every foul spirit, and, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So the Lord is acknowledging that the world has gotten to a point, sisters and brothers, where it is almost uninhabitable, for those, for the people of God, it is rampant sin, demonicness all over the earth. Read verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her desolate. So everybody who could take advantage of the delicacies of the devil have taken it. When the Lord, when, when the Lord was given, uh, given the option to to bow down to Satan in Luke, the fourth chapter, he turned it down. He said, look, it's all mine to give. So everything that the Lord uh, that was given to the Lord or offered to him, he offered it to the kings of the earth and they accepted it. Hook, line and sinker. Go ahead and read verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. And that's what he's saying to each and every one of y'all, sisters and brothers. Take heed to the handwriting of the wall, come out of her uh, um, and be not partakers of her sins. Separate yourself, sanctify yourself. Sanctify doesn't mean anything. It means setting apart unto holiness. That's what sanctify means. Like every month, Brother Boy, you say, look, I, every month I sit down and I sanctify my bills. I'm going to pay this over here. I'm going to pay this on that day. I separate them. I sanctify them. So it ain't that you, you sanctified, oh, he's holy. Let's just give him obedience. No, man, you, you, you separate yourself unto the righteousness of God. Go ahead and read verse five. For her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. He said her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. Remember, you reap whatever you sow and God sees and hears Every single word we could have read where it says that you shall give an account for every single word that you speak that comes out of your mouth. You shall give an account thereof in the judgment. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen once the books fly open, sisters and brothers. For her sins are reached unto heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Verse six. Reward her even as she rewarded, rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works. That go to gangster again. Mm -hmm. Double on whatever she did to you, double, double that up. If you cut off one of your arms, cut off both of hers. I want to walk around armless because that's how I am. Go ahead and read. In the cup which she hath filled, fill her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived, deli 
and live deliciously. We don't want to be following behind that system, brothers. See, we can't be in the, in the mindset of go along to get along. When we see stuff, man, you can't participate in everything that's going on here in the earth. You just can't do it. You got enough holy brothers and sisters around here that's cool enough that you can hang with and do what you got to do with. You know, when Israel get together, we, 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 you know, we in our righteous setting, you know, we can have a good time. You know, I, 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 not, not especially when you go to Chicago, boy, they, they woo. They treat you right on the church ground. We got to go all out doing all kinds of stuff. All right, keep going, my brother. How much she hath glorified herself and live, delic and live delic deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. Mm -hmm. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And shall see no sorrow, thinking that you're getting away. But go ahead, last verse, verse eight. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall utterly burn, she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. Judges her. Now let's go, if we will, to uh, Matthew 23. Matthew chapter 23. And the thing about it, sisters and brothers, is that the Lord, you know, he's, he, he, he essentially is just kind of waiting on you to get yourself together. Because there's a time period that the door is going to be shut. It's going to be shut, sisters and brothers. And the thing about it is that even way back in the day, you know, the Lord gave people opportunity. And we're talking about in the Old Testament. But every time he sent somebody to give the word of truth, Israel tried to knock them down. Just like they do today when we go out. Um, and, and, and try to put that word on the table. A lot of times people reject it. But, you know, we don't worry about it because we know the Lord's sheep going to hear his voice. We shake our boots off and keep going. But, you know, they try to tear us down just like they tried to tear, um, tear the Lord down himself. Uh, 23, Matthew 23, we're going to read two verses there. Let's read verses 37 and 38. Go ahead. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, the ones that came to speak on my behalf. Go ahead. And stoned them which are sent unto thee. Uh-huh. How often would I, would I have gathered my, thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. He said, oh, how often I wanted to gather you together as a people and bring you together and galvanize you as the unit or the nation of people that I wanted to represent me. How often I would have done that. But guess what? You wasn't ready. I didn't want you didn't want to listen to what I said. So as a result, read. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. He said, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And we desolate now, sisters and brothers. We are desolate. We are in trouble. We are blind, just like he said, who is blind but my servant, which is Israel. So by and large, you are blinded. Let's go, if we will, my brother, to the last scripture. Let's go to 2 Peter, first chapter. 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter, the first chapter. And the first verse, we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Verses 1 through 4. When you get there, my brother, read it. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have, that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh huh. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Jesus, of, of God, and of Jesus our Lord. Go ahead. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. That pertain unto life and, and godliness. godliness. Which is what he has given unto us so that we can make it through this terrain that we're trying to get through, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. Through the knowledge of him, that have called us to glory and virtue. That have called us to glory and virtue. Go ahead. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great... Exceeding and great precious promises. Promises, sisters and brothers, that if you just hold on, hold out, 
look at what's going on, see the handwriting on the wall, and then move as you see. You ought to move as it relates to doing the right thing by God. Go ahead. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. He said that by these things that you will be partakers of the divine nature. And the divine nature is that heavenly body that has formulated itself unto God or into God. The divine nature is what all of us are looking for. Go ahead. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. He said having, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We are always in a, a, in, in a constant path of escaping, sisters and brothers. All of us have found ourselves in situations where we looked at it. No, that ain't for me. It looked good, but it ain't for me. And that can be places and that can be people. Everything that look good ain't good. And the flesh be pulling on you. Go for it. Go on, do it. But then that's where that spiritual warfare pops in, sisters and brothers. The righteousness in you is over here. And the wickedness is over here. And there's a clashing. A clashing. That's spiritual warfare. If you never knew what it was, that's it. You had to make a decision whether you wanted to do right or wrong. You knew the difference between both. And let's just say that time you did that which was right. It don't always feel good that you did right because the flesh is making you feel as if you missed out. And you can physically feel when you wanted to do something and you just didn't do it or couldn't do it. You physically feel like something was taken from you. I didn't get to do it. I didn't get to go. I didn't get that. I, I, I could have done something to her, but I didn't. I brought my mind, soul, and body under subjection and I held back, and I took the righteous way out. You have just won that particular spiritual battle Amen. with the devil. So I say again, sisters and brothers, the handwriting on the wall, behold, look at the handwriting on the wall, because it's on the wall. It's everywhere where you can see it. Don't be like Belteshazzar. You saw what it was. You saw who you needed to serve, and you said, I'm going to do something else anyway. So we thank you for your time. Amen. So this is what we're going to do. Baptism scriptures. I'd like to um, acknowledge Brother Charles Jackson. He's the director of music in Chicago. Amen. Brother Charles Jackson. And his wife. Amen. 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 And boy, when, you know, when it comes to those announcements, announcements is like another lesson. We're going <laughs> we we to have to revisit that. Um, Brother Teddy. All right, brothers and sisters, it's time to celebrate. We got about nine people getting baptized today. Amen. And that's a good reason to celebrate. But before we do that, I got a few scriptures that uh, we need to look at before we do that. And we're going to get right to it because we're going to go right to the source. And that source is sin. Give me 1 John 3 and 4, brother. 1 John 3 and 4. And when you get there, go ahead and read it. Whosoever. Mic check. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. There is no interpretation needed. The only thing I'm going to interpretate for you on that is transgression. That means breaking. So you breaking the law. You commit adultery, you breaking the law. You lie, you breaking the law. We know that. But let's see what it causes, though. Give me uh, Romans 6 and pick it up at verse 23. Romans 6 and pick it up at verse 23, brother. When you get there, go ahead and read it. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is what? Death. Go ahead. But the, but the gift of God is, is eternal life through, the, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Right? Man. So how do you get that gift? 
You got to come to the Lord. You got to go through Jesus to get that gift. And he wants you to come to him. He's seeking for you to come. You got to go out and seek him rather. Right? So let, let's go to Isaiah 55 and let's take a look at that. Isaiah 55 and pick it up at verse 6 when you get there. Go ahead, read when you're there. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You got to seek the Lord while he may be found. And I know some of you out here is thinking, well, I'm probably going to get baptized next year or in a couple of months. Now is the time. If you want to repent of your sins and get baptized, now is the time. Man. Keep reading. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he may. While There's going to be near. a time when he ain't going to be able to be found. So you got to look for the Lord now while you got a chance. Because like the Lord said, once you're dead, that's it. You can't repent once you're dead. Go ahead. Call upon him while he is near. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Mm -hmm. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That's right. The Lord, is, he wants to pardon your sins, but you got to seek him out. Skip down to verse 11. So shall my word be, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And, it shall, right. pro, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I, see, I sent it. That's right. If the Lord said it, it's going to happen. You can believe that. Amen. Let's go to Romans 3 and let's take a look at what he's going to pardon, the sins he's going to pardon. Romans 3 and pick it up at uh, verse 23. Romans 3 and verse 23. We're going to look at the sins he's going to pardon. When you get there, go ahead and read. For all have sinned. We all have sinned. Go ahead. And come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption of that is in Jesus. In Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus is your redeemer. Amen. All right. And his grace, that's that blood that he shed it for you. But it ain't, it's free. But you got to work to get it. All right. Keep reading, brother. Whom God has set forth to be a propiti propitiation <laughs> through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. That's right. The remission of sins that are past. That's the sins that he will pardon, them sins that are past. Now, if you sin after that, ignorantly, well, you got to advocate Jesus to Christ. Amen. You can go to him and, and get forgiveness. But if you do it willfully, well, that's a different story. You can go to Hebrews chapter 10 on your own time and read that. But it's not good, I'll tell you that. Where, where are we at, brother? Through, I can read it again. Where you were? Uh, 25. 25. Go ahead and read it. Whom God has set forth to be a prop propitiation through faith. Skip down blood. to uh, verse 26 and read that. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe, believeth in Jesus. That's right. So you got to believe in the Lord. You got to believe in Jesus. Because I tell you right now, all power has been given to Jesus. All power. Let's go uh, turn over to Matthew's chapter 28, brother. Matthew's chapter 28 and start at verse 18. Twenty-eight and eighteen. When you get there, go ahead and read. Eighteen and seventeen. Seventeen. No, just go ahead and hit eighteen. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. You go got ye. to go through Jesus because all power has been given to him in heaven and in earth. Go ahead. Keep reading. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's right. So now we're going to take a look and see if the apostles did exactly what he said. So let's go to Acts 2 and we're going to get right to it. Let's pick it up at verse 36, brother. Acts 2 and 36. When you get there, go ahead and read it. 
Because this was the time when they done crucified Christ. Go ahead, brother. 36, when you get there. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both the Lord and Christ. That's right. Go ahead. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the, the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of who? Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keep going. For the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now we know the remission of sins. We talking about past sins, don't we? Amen. Keep reading, brother. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Mm -hmm. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Skip down to verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls. And we got nine souls today, brothers and sisters, that's Amen. getting baptized. Amen. Now it's time to rejoice like they rejoice in heaven. The angels rejoice in heaven. So pay attention to the uh, baptism at this time. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Brother King, yes, by the power of this in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Brother Will, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Brother Billy Ray, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, all right, all right. So this is near and dear to me. This is my brother. <laughs> brother Ron, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
Brothers and sisters, this is another near and dear to me. This is my mother's husband. All right. Brother Gunner, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, yeah. And again, brothers and sisters, this is another family member. This is my mother. <laughs> Sister Ella, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remissions of your sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And yet again, another family member. Right. Hey, it's all Huntsville. It's all Huntsville. All right. All right. So this is my first cousin. All right. Come on. Sister Shalette, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remissions of your sins, yes, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'll do it again. I got you. I got you. You 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 Yes, sir. Brother Barry, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of your sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sister Naya, by the authority invested in me, I baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remissions of your sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Is that it, Brother Olive? That's everyone? That's, that's all, bro. Okay, if you can bow your heads. <clears throat> Lord, as again, we come to you with bowed heads and humble hearts, thanking you so much for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. We ask, Lord, as, as these nine uh, make that step, Lord, to, to show their faith in you and the faith in your word and the faith in who you are, we ask that as they go from beyond this point, that you bless them from the top of their heads yeah. to the soles of their feet, Lord. Give them the presence of mind to know that the enemy is, has, has recognized them now. And as they walk on this journey, Lord, allow them to keep with them the shield of faith, the spirit of truth with them at all times. We ask that you bless them, Lord, as they leave this place and they go out into the world. As they go out into the highways and the byways of this world, we ask that you protect them from all hurt, harm and danger. These and all blessings we ask in the precious, holy and mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. We're going to go ahead, sisters and brothers, and stand up and face the east to close out. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thine will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil. But one. deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.